Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin, coming to you as we dive into God's Word for comfort, assurance, and for guidance for our lives as Christians living under the cross. It's been an interesting week. Here in Wisconsin, we have seen several statues torn down by angry, violent mobs. The sad thing is, however, that the statues that they tore down are not Confederate generals. They're not Confederate soldiers who were fighting uh, to protect their, their right to own slaves. No, the statues that they tore down, one of them was a fictional character, just a piece of art, artwork uh, representing progress. Uh, a statue called Forward. But they tore it down. Perhaps they don't believe in progress. The other statue they tore down was a statue of a white man. And maybe that's why they tore it down, because they're angry at white men. I don't know. But that particular white man was not a slave owner. No, he was a Norwegian immigrant who came to America and fought in the Union Army as an abolitionist to set slaves free, and died doing that, died in battle. And for that, his statue was torn down. Sheer ignorance and mob mentality. It's sad what we see going on in the world. Sadder still is the tweet that was put out by a Black Lives Matter activist, a leader among the Black Lives Matter movement known as Sean King. And in his tweet, actually two tweets, this is what he said. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. And then in a second tweet, Sean King said this. Yes, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and their white friends should also come down. They are a gross form of white supremacy. Created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda, they should all come down. If Sean King were here, he would say, this needs to come down. This statue of Jesus is too white and needs to be destroyed. If Sean King were here in our church, he would probably look at our stained glass window of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and say, shatter it. Destroy it. It betrays something about the Black Lives Matter political organization. They are not Christian. The Black Lives Matter political organization does not represent Christian values or anything biblical. And it's evident in the leadership and the things that they are teaching and promoting including the words of Sean King. Let's deal with what Sean King had to say. Sean King shows his ignorance about the Bible when he says that in the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Yes, it's true that Mary and Joseph went to Egypt. They didn't go there to blend in. There was a large Jewish population in Egypt. And that should remind us of something, that Jesus was not black. He also was not white. No, he was Jewish. He was Semitic. He did probably have darker skin than most of the, the paintings that we see uh, in European art. A number of years ago, a, a group of scientists studied that region of, of the world at that time and developed what they thought was a composite of the most average-looking Jewish man of that time. 
And this is what they came up with. A little bit different than what we are used to seeing in European art that depicts Jesus. But he was by no means a black man. And the fact that they went to Egypt was because God told them to, not because they needed to blend in. They went to Egypt because God told Joseph to take Mary and Jesus there. They went to Egypt because God was fulfilling a promise, a prophecy. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Which goes back also to how the Jewish people had been slaves in Egypt and God called them out of Egypt at the time of Moses. No, the Jewish people were not Egyptian or black. They were Semitic. And Jesus is not black either. He's not white, and I think we have to recognize that. He was not European. But there's also nothing wrong with Christians identifying Jesus in a way that is similar to what we see in the mirror. And that's true not just for white people, that's true for all people. Because finally, what did Jesus come into this world to do? He took on our human flesh. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John 1 verse 14. Jesus took on our flesh to rescue us. He became one of us so that he could save us from our sins. Hebrews 2 verse 14 says, Therefore, since the children share flesh and blood, he also shared the same flesh and blood, so that through death he could destroy the one who had the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who were held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. No, there's nothing wrong with portraying Jesus in a way that is familiar to us. And so if we portray him as a white European, there's nothing wrong with that. It reminds us, yes, Jesus came into this world to save me also. But there's, no, there's nothing wrong with a black person portraying Jesus as a black person. I remember in Alaska visiting a member who had a nativity scene where all the figures were... Uh, it looked like Eskimos. It was Native American art, Native Alaskan art, beautifully done. And I thought, how awesome is that to portray Jesus as an Eskimo? And as far as geographically, I don't think you can get much further away from Jerusalem or Ju Judea as the north slope of Alaska. We portray Jesus as one of us because it reminds us that he came into this world to save us, you and me, to rescue us from our sins. And what an awesome gift that is. One final thought about Sean King's statement. It reminds us that the church is under attack. We are the church militant here on earth. We've had it good for a while with the religious liberties that we have in America. But sadly, it sounds and it looks like that religious liberty is coming more and more under attack. Christians, stand firm in your faith. Even as men like Sean King threaten to tear down our statues and our stained glass windows. Stand firm. Pray for your enemies. Love your enemies and do good to them, Jesus said. Pray for them, but be ready. Stand firm in your faith. Jesus told us that there would be persecution against Christians in the end times, that the love of many will grow cold, but he also promised that his church would endure, that the gates of hell would not overcome it. And so we'll close our devotion today with hymn 538, The Church's One Foundation.
The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation, by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one nor all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. The church shall never perish, her dear Lord to defend, to guide, sustain, and cherish, is with her to the end. Though there be those that hate her and strive to see her fail, against both foe and traitor, she ever shall prevail. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up, how long? And soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Nation. Mid toil and tribulation, and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore, till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest.